Hi, I'm Jimmy. I play drums in Picture This, and this is my drum setup for the Modern Love Tour. So, straight into the drums. I'm using DW drums, they're the acrylic drums. It's the design series. Um, it's just these three drums 22 by 18 kick, 12 by 9 tom, 16 by 14 floor tom. I'm pretty sure. I would have, I wanted to have a see through kit because I didn't want anything. Up, like in the way of the screen um, so that was kind of mainly the reason for it they also sound great they're extremely consistent you know what I mean temperature doesn't really affect them at all since they're acrylic they sound great they're loud they're lively uh, and they, they, they kind of suit yeah sound great just I just bought this kit um, a couple of years ago now and um, just have been using it since it's just like I said it's so consistent it doesn't it stays the same sounds the same all the time um, it looks great, it looks really cool, um, which is important as well, especially when, again when we're using a lot of production, it's good to have something that looks great. And um, yeah, it's quite simplistic really, it's nothing, it's nothing too crazy, the drums. And, yeah. The snare is, um, it's a Gretsch aluminium, it's 14 by 6 and a half, and we've been using, how long have we been using this, probably a year, two years? Uh, about 18 months, yeah. Yeah, and um, only a year and a half we've been using it and it's it sounds incredible it has a lot of top end but also a lot of body in it because of the size of it so it can cut through better than anything else i was using a different snare for a while and i was using a, a smaller steel snare as well a couple of years ago but it would just lose a lot of body and um, i love a snare drum that has a lot of body to it so this is kind of the perfect combination something that's uh, metal but also is very fat and big you know, it kind of gives the best of both worlds sound-wise. For uh, the snare drum, we're using Power Stroke 3 on the top just because it's very durable and I have, I'm quite accurate with my strikes and I can kill a snare drum head quite quickly. So it's, um, these heads are very durable uh, for the snare drum. When we're doing uh, arena shows, we change it every day, really. Um, um, the bottom is an Evans Hazy. It's oh, it's a Remo Hazy. So the, the bottom is a Remo Hazy, top is a Power Stroke 3. Um, just works, it's a winning combination, I guess. Um, for the kick drum, we're just using the stock front head, obviously. Um, but for the batter side, we're using an EMAT, the Level 360 Evans EMAT, which, uh, again, it's kind of like a pre-EQ'd um, bass drum head. We, ha we had a different head on it for a while, and it just it didn't work very well and um, so we switched back to this one it's kind of the safe option for us and um, we use quite a mixed match of, of drum heads but uh, that works great on the kick drum especially for the acrylic kit as well it gives it a really um, punchy sound for the rack tom we're, and for both toms we're using pinstripes uh, remo pinstripes on top again they're durable but also they're they're the most controlled sounding drum heads it's, and they don't dent very easily if you're using an emperor a clear emperor they can dent extremely easy especially when i use quite big drumsticks and for the bottom we're using um they're just the evans the g1s clears uh, and again obviously i do love coated heads but you, it's an acrylic drum kit you know what i mean <laughs> so i kind of have to use clear heads but um they sound great they're extremely durable they don't dent very easily um they let the acrylic shells resonate properly and there's some moon gels on some of the drums, anyway, all of the drums really. Um, just kind of control, like, uh, the acrylic does sound great, but it, it does have a tendency to be quite um, obnoxious at times, you know, it's extremely loud and can be sometimes difficult to control. So those moon gels, some on the top and there are some on the bottom as well, just give it a, a bit of a tighter sound um, and doesn't let it ring as much, uh, which acrylic shells are kind of known to do. Um, so yeah. There the drums. So I'll start over here. So this is one of my oldest cymbals I've ever used. This is a Groove Ride, 21 inch HHX Groove Ride, which I bought a long time ago and I've been using it ever since. It still hasn't broken on me. Um, one of my favorite cymbals. I, I have a second Groove Ride as well, but it's it's a different finish. It's the, it's the brilliant finish. This is the natural finish, which I prefer. It's darker and not as loud. The other one is way too loud. Um, Hi-hats, I have a secondary pair of hi-hats, 
uh, over here, which is the Legacies, the 14 inch Legacies, which are, it's good because compared to these hi-hats, which are HHX click hats, which are very um, top endy, extremely tight sounding, compared to these ones, which are quite trashy sounding because they're a lot lighter. These are quite heavier, so they're a lot more, uh, like a more concentrated hi-hat sound, whereas these are quite trashy, so it's a nice contrast. Um, we just started using this symbol, which is a 19 inch legacy, um, which sounds really, really good because I, I have I've had this one for a while, which is also an 18 inch legacy. I've had that one for a long time, which I've always loved the sound of. I've always loved how it's, um, it's quiet, it's not too loud. And I like that about the legacy symbols, that they're not too loud. They're almost kind of buttery in a way. Um, and they're quite light and they're quite bendable. You know, you can you can bend them quite a bit with both both these symbols, which is what I I love symbols that are extremely light and you don't need to hit them hard to make them resonate. Some of the heavier symbols you really have to dig into them to make them properly sound like a symbol, which is, means you're gonna hit them way harder and they're gonna be way louder. So these are thin, you don't have to hit them hard to make them resonate. And um, Sabian all around. I've been playing Sabian for a long time. I'm actually an endorsee of Sabian. So yeah, shout out. So I used the Roland SPD pad SX, whatever they call it. It's the red one because I want it to be fancy. And uh, <laughs> I have three patches that I use. I have a mo Since we're in a modern love tour, I have a modern love patch. So I have like kick drum, snare drum, hi-hat, a different kind of kick drum, a sub drop, claps are all up here. I use all of these for the claps so I can hit them here because I use a lot of clap sounds. I also have a hurt nobody patch which I actually trigger um, some of the actual section. I trigger the pre-course off the pad which makes a, a like a... It's a section that I actually took from Pro Tools and I put it into the pad. That's kind of hard to recreate live because it was used only by it's. It was recorded only using like um, human voice, so it's like lots of ums and um, lots of weird distorted vocal sounds to create this weird soundscape, which is quite long. It's maybe like five seconds long, so that triggers it at the top of each pre-chorus, which sounds great and. I have different kind of snare drum sounds, and I also sampled my own voice uh, beatbox for um, for these two samples on Hurt Nobody, uh, which I use in the second verse of that song. So that's a that's a patch just for that song, and then the third patch is a patch for just one drink. It has some finger clicks. It has a different kind of sub drop, different kind of kick drum. You know, it's kind of nice. I, I always kind of set them out the same, so I know okay, the sub drop is here. The claps are there, you know. I always have it kind of the same, so I know where to go. So that's um, they're the three main patches. I use. There's a lot of other stock patches, but I, I don't use them. I kind of stick to the, the ones I use for the tour. Um, so before the Modern Love Tour, I was using separate cymbal stands for everything, and then I bought these two racks. I actually have researched them, especially this one here. I, w I wanted I wanted something that could hold a whole drum kit on four legs. So one, two, three, four legs holds everything. And um, so I found one of these things, which is amazing. It can hold the tom, cymbal, snare drum all in one. Uh, and then this rack holds the SPD, hi-hats, uh, ride cymbal, crash cymbal, and it also holds all the microphones as well. And it just makes it a lot easier for when you're doing a long tour and you're traveling a lot and you're coming in at a venue, it's a lot easier for Bobby to set up um, and be able to spike it a lot easier that way too because um, you can you can easily cymbal stands can slide. They can be in wrong positions. But when everything is on, on a rack and it's, it's 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 exactly measured the way I like to, it's so easy for me to come in and not even have to check the drum kit because it's it's going to be set up the same way every time. So this system is really really cool. I'm using an uh, Iron Cobra. Um, it's quite an old pedal. Uh, I was using a different kind of pedal. I don't remember what it was. I think it was a DW pedal, but. I switched to this one because it was just more robust. The other one I was using was getting squeaky and getting uh, old and rickety and very quickly. But this one holds up a lot better. Um, and I've been using this cymbal stand for, I've had this cymbal stand, I'll tell you now, for 11 years. <laughs> and I'm still using it. Like a lot of the stuff I here is extremely old. Like, like I'm saying, that cymbal, I bought that when I was um, 18. 
18, that was eight years ago. And I kind of stick to the stuff I like and I don't try and change too much. Um, so yeah. Sticks, yes, we have Signature Series Vader, endorsed by Vader, so they are the picture of this 55 BB, um, which is like a bigger version of a 5B, which when people usually sit behind my drum kit, they're shocked by how big the drumsticks are, but I've got very big hands, I don't like to hit the drums too hard, so I like to have sticks that kind of do the work for me, in a way, so I don't have to put too much effort into it, you can, when you find the right balance and right weight of stick for the size of hands you have and the kind of playing style you have, it makes playing a lot easier. You don't have to put as much effort to make you tired. I find if I if I were to use smaller drumsticks, uh, I'd get tired easily because I'm I'm using a lot more effort to try and get stuff out of sound. The type of drumsticks you use can change the sound of the drums completely. Like if you if you change from hickory to maple, you'd I at least I would notice the difference of the sound of the drums and the impact of the drums. So these sticks have a lot of top end weight, which I love because again you don't need to you don't need to kill the drum. You know, you can let the stick do the work. Um, I love these sticks, and yeah, they fit my hands. This is Minnie's. This is yours, isn't it? Isn't it? Is it yours or not? Sold it to you. It could be mine now. I'll buy it off you. It's a Porter and Davis. Um, so like, you can. So Minnie, our sound engineer, feeds um, past a certain frequency I like, so the lower frequencies into this, so I can feel the kick drum. I can feel the bass, I can also feel some stuff on the SPD. Um, it's just a lot better since I'm on ears, no monitors. It's just a lot better to be able to feel uh, bass. It kind of adds a three-dimensional aspect to your mix, especially when um, especially when you're playing and everyone's on ears, the PA is quite far away and you, you don't feel it as much, especially in bigger venues. So it kind of adds another dimension that you, I don't need the bass as loud in my ears or I don't need the kick drum as loud. If you can feel it, it's, it's a lot better. It's a lot easier to play as well when you can actually feel what you're playing. And sometimes a disconnect if you have it in your ears and you're completely closed off and you're playing the drums, it can be a bit disconnecting from what you're playing. But when you can feel it in your body, it, can, it, can, it makes it a lot easier. It, it, it's something less to worry about as well. So um, I don't know much about the ears. Uh, tell me some info about the ears, Vinny. Uh, UE 11s. Yeah, we're using UE11s in ears. We're all on wireless packs, which uh, Mini looks after, and um, they're just Mini had recommended them to us. They're well, are they triple driver, double driver, quadruple driver, triple? I think they're triple driver. There are there are ones with more, but um, but we go by what Mini says. He knows best. So we we're all on UE11s, and it's it's incredible. We have. We have, we've, we've gotten to the stage now where we don't even really sound check anymore, so uh, it sounds great, it really does. So this is, um, these are U-Track, they're Cymatic U-Track uh, U24s. We've got two of them running in sync that are connected via an Ethernet cable, uh, which then go into this radial, um, this like, SWA radial, which is a switcher in case if one of these were to go down, we can switch to the slave, which will then kick in. This runs clicks, it runs backup percussion, um, it runs like backup, any parts that we can't play live, because we don't have enough hands to do it, this will do it for us. And it's, um, it's, it's amazing, it keeps everyone in sync. Uh, it gives keys for Ryan as well, it'll play a key in his ear so he knows what key the song is in, so if he's starting the song vocally. Um, it's it's a great thing to have. It, it it's it's great as well to be able to have everything kind of timed the same way. Every song is the same length and for recording purposes or anything like that. And um, it's just a great element to the show to have it. It can make a live show sound a lot bigger when you have those extra things that or extra effects that might be in the the recorded track. To be able to have them at a live show is um, is important at times. And sometimes I can't do it. I, I don't have hands to trigger it off an SPD. So this will play them or any extra guitar parts or anything like that. Um, this is a this is amazing. It took me a long time to figure out how to use it, but when I did, uh, I love it. I I I wouldn't change it unless unless someone else was working it and they wanted to change it. And yeah, let them do it. But I'm a control freak, so I like having it there beside me. <laughs> yeah. So. 
that's been my gear rundown. I'm Jimmy. I play drums for Picture This. If you want to find out more about the band, you can go to picturethismusic.com or you can go to any of our social media platforms where we are at Band Picture This. Except for Twitter, we are at Picture This. Go check us out on Spotify and iTunes and Apple Music and all those places. And we're on tour for most of the year all over the world. So please check a date, come see us play, and uh, see the gear in real life. Ha <laughs> ha.